Welcome to How to Build Local Communities, a Meetup Perspective. I'm joined by Henrietta Dombrovskaya, Associate Director of Databases at Bravient Holdings, who will discuss how Chicago Pug grew into the third largest in the Western Hemisphere, the effect of COVID-19 on local groups, and how Chicago Pug managed. My name is Lindsay Hooper, and I'll be your moderator for today's mm -hmm. webinar. A little bit about your speaker. Henrietta is a database researcher and developer with over 35 years of academic and industrial experience. She holds a PhD in computer science from the University of St. Petersburg, Russia, and currently holds multiple roles as Associate Director of Databases at Bravient Holdings, local organizer of the Chicago PostgreSQL user group, and she's an active community member, a frequent speaker at the PostgreSQL conferences. She's the winner of the Technologist of the Year 2019 Award of the Illinois Technology Association. So welcome. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Hetty. Take it away. Hello, everybody. So thank you so much for coming. I am very surprised that so many people wanted to listen to non-technical presentation. Uh, and uh, as Linz already said, um, I am um, uh, I'm the associate director of databases in Bravian Holdings, but today I'm talking in my capacity of the Chicago Postgres user group local organizer. Uh, and uh, first of all, this talk was originally prepared uh, for the um, New York uh, PG conference uh, in much we didn't happen because we everybody know why it didn't happen and it was originally planned as a short talk so it will be definitely not the whole hour but uh you know we like talked about whether it's still worth presenting and we decided yes it probably still worth presenting so originally why uh why i actually decided to give this talk uh <laughs> because everybody were asking about this. Uh, it, it was funny because when I started, I did not plan that it will be something unusual, unexpected. And uh, when um, like two years ago, I think Tom Kinkai said, you know what, Chicago Park is the third largest Postgres user group in the Western hemisphere. I like seriously. And I went and checked and turned out, yes. And I think I checked it today. I think now we are actually, uh, I mean, maybe not the third, maybe four, depends on how you count, because uh, there are mm, some uh, meetups which are not officially like PostgreSQL user group, but they're still kind of all about Postgres. Uh, and I think uh, also uh, I'm the only female uh, main <laughs> local organizer. I do not know what this good and bad, but it's the fact. So uh, since we grew from almost nothing into something, uh, actually people regularly ask me, how did I do this? And in all the uh, Postgres conferences, somebody would find me, um, you know, and during the break between meetings and, oh, you know what, somebody told me, I need to talk to you, we want to do um, our local Postgres user group, so how you did it? And I thought, okay, uh, you know what? I don't think I did something special, except I really wanted to build the Postgres user group. Uh, so uh, to be fair, it's not like I started it. Uh, the Chicago Postgres user group existed for a while, uh, but let's just go through the stages of its history. Uh, so it was first organized in August uh, 2011, and it was hosted by Innova International. And incidentally, I joined uh, Innova in uh, July 2011. So I was there when it started. Uh, so how did it look? So uh, first meetup happened on September 31st. There were nine attendees. Okay, we sat around the table and talked. And uh, then it was going and going for several years, several meaning eight years. Uh, and uh, that was kind of what was happening, except of, you know, when Bruce was presenting or Joselka was presenting, uh, like our typical attendance was uh, like less than 10 people with RSVPs going like from 
10 to 15. So that was the situation. And then, uh, you know, Chicago lost the only Postgres conference, uh, which we had. And then I started to talk to community, how we can get the conference back. And I got, okay, Henrietta, how is your Chicago Park is doing? I'm like, not doing, not existing. Like, okay, and you want conference back to Chicago and you do not even have proper user group, like look at Austin. I looked at Austin and uh, I said, okay. You know what? I think I can do it. So, uh, I did that. It's not 19, it was 16. Oh, and nobody corrected me. Okay, so it was November 16, uh, the previous time. So, uh, then uh, at the um, end of uh, 2016, I uh, joined Braven Holdings and uh, our leadership was very welcoming and, uh, you know, they said, you know what, yes, if you want to host user group, we can do it, we can provide the space. And um, I talked to uh, the current local organizer and uh, said, okay, uh, let's try to transition. And uh, so this was first uh, in you, Chicago Postgres user group, January 18, uh, 2017. The number of RSVPs jumped immediately. And uh, the most interesting thing, we had as many people as number of RSVPs. I am not sure whether they were exactly the same people. I think somebody did not show up, but people who did not RSVP come. So that was like huge success. And uh, yeah, it had been like going on and on and on and on until pandemic happened. And then it was a new story, but that's like our brief history. Uh, so now, uh, first of all, we always have people, we always have a uh, crowd, uh, and uh, we actually are enjoying <laughs> what we are doing. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, the question is, so that's our exciting history, so how did we get there? And uh, as I said, I was presented with this challenge. And, um, you know, I like challenges and I take them seriously. And most of the time, whether it work or not work, everybody who knows me know that if I want something to happen, it happens. So most of the time, when people ask me how you did it, how you built Chicago Park, I like I really, really wanted it. And I wanted it and it happened. But obviously, it did not happen with the like waving of your magic wand. So what exactly? What exactly I did? Uh, actually, I was thinking what went wrong with the previous version of Chicago Park and what I can do differently. And uh, so we actually sat with uh, the former organizers, we like listed it and we like, okay, so what will work, what, what did work, what did not work, what can we change? And I listened to everybody and uh, again, did everything differently, not even what we were talking about. So uh, first of all, I stopped doing several things. And uh, the first thing I stopped, so I, uh, uh, so, okay, so first thing I stopped, I stopped to wait for more people to show up. And I can tell you why I stopped. Because, uh, okay, uh, the park meetup happens on the weekday after work. And in Chicago, the situation is that many people or majority of people who work in the city, they live in the suburbs. So normally they want to go catch that train. So they can get to park like relatively early, but then they are constrained from the like, from the other side of the meetup. So if we are waiting, if like, okay, there are like five people showing up, let's wait for a little bit, let's wait for a little bit, then guess what? People who came on time, they getting bored, they do not want next time to come on time. <laughs> and then when they finally start things, then they have to leave. So I started to like literally start on time and that was very challenging. But even now uh, when we are going virtual, I start sharply at six o'clock. Again, the other thing was before we did like, okay, we will start like at six, but it will just start like coming, talking, etc. So no, we start at 
designated time, no matter what. I mean, I do not wait for like more than 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, once actually, you know what I had? Once I had that my speaker did not show up uh, and <laughs> I had five minutes to <laughs> arrange new speaker on the spot. And when my speaker came 20 minutes later, I said, sorry, no, he got very upset. He actually stopped uh, coming, but you know what? Rules are rules. And I think people appreciate it. Then I started to skip introduce yourself part. And that is uh, in contrast to any uh, suggestions which you would normally get. Because normally people, yeah, that's an icebreaker. People should like start feeling comfortable and uh, you should start going around the table, introduce yourself, introduce yourself. So I stopped doing this because I saw how it used to happen before. So first we wait for people. We wait like 15 minutes or whatever, nobody does anything. Then if there are like, uh, you know, like more than five people, it takes a while because each person is saying, okay, I'm so-and-so, I work so-and-so, my experience is so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, nobody remembers. So when you go around the table of 20 people, nobody will remember I mean, okay, maybe somebody, but majority of people even would not remember who is who, and it doesn't help. It's not really an icebreaker because uh, it does not lead to any conversation, uh, like literally a waste of time. And uh, other people, again, who came there, say they came by six and they need to take 7.30 train and we have 15 minutes of wait and 20 minutes introduction and then they will need to go at seven and nothing did not start yet. So um, I skip this uh, and uh, we have uh, like other networking in the beginning at the end, but I mean, I found it to be completely useless part which does not help with anything. The other thing I stopped doing, having meetups without agenda. So that was the other thing where everybody were guilty. Uh, not always we would have a speaker. And then instead of just saying, okay, you know what, let's reschedule them. Our back then local organizer would, okay, let's just sit and talk. That's like, seriously, you want to come to like some other place after work, after work day in the middle of the week uh, and uh, that sit and talk about like, I don't know, about how database people are not appreciated in the tech companies. That was like the topic. So not worth gathering. So uh, I was making sure that each time I actually have a very specific agenda and I have an uh, invited speaker. The other thing I stopped, uh, I stopped to have a uh, like specific date for the meetup. We are still meeting once a month but we became more flexible with dates. And uh, you know how it helps? Again, most of the time people will tell you, you need to have specific day, like we had a third, first day of the month, uh, like at six o'clock, that's a meetup. Uh, you know what happened? Some people just cannot make it on Wednesday. They have something else on Wednesday. They will never show up then. So we experimented a lot about what days of the week work. So what I found, First days do not work. Like, I do not know why, but everybody have like 15 different commitments on first day after work. First days are the worst. Uh, so Tuesdays and Wednesdays are equally good. Sometimes Mondays can play in though like less frequently, but what I decided, um, we made it like kind of loose. So we are doing either Tuesday or Wednesday, either the second or the third week of the month. And it might look like small change, but it really helped because, uh, you know, if somebody cannot make Wednesdays, they can make Tuesdays. Somebody cannot make this, somebody can make the same date like next month. So it really, I think, boosted attendance. And by the way, people started to pay attention to the meetup announcements because, you know what, <laughs> you do not want to know how many people went to the old place when first meetup at Braven Holding was announced, when we just moved it to, um, to first Braven Holdings office. And uh, how many people were keeping coming to old Innova office? Because they used to have this like first word of the month. It's in email, it's in invite, it's on the meetup page. People did not listen. But then 
after we educated people that you know what you need to read the announcements then after prevent holding moved to the new office uh, nobody went back to the old office everybody read the mails and everybody knew where to go so i think that was also a good thing so those are the things which i stopped doing and on the positive side what i started doing so uh, that's what I said, started being flexible between days of the week and days of the month. Have a guest speaker each meetup and announce it at least three weeks <laughs> before the meetup. Uh, that is not easy. You know, again, I heard people, oh, you know what, yeah, you do not have to do anything for the meetup. Uh, actually, you need to make sure you have a scheduler. And ideally, I'm trying to have line up for the next two meetups, at least talk tentatively with different people and see who has uh, who is able to fit us in the schedule. Uh, the other thing I started uh, started to do meetups earlier. Again, when we did it in real life, doors open and pizza arrive at 5:30. It works for people. Again, uh, people were telling me it does not work for Austin. Probably, I don't know. It does work in Chicago because in Chicago, again, uh, outside pandemic, people come out, uh, people are done by five and uh, five thirty. it's very good time for them to show up. They can eat pizza, they can socialize, they can walk around, introduce themselves. And then uh, we have this firm start time. So that uh, I honestly think it's like the most important part. Because, and um, when I talk to other meetup hosts and uh, I heard like, oh, she's starting on time. Like, what's a big deal? Looks like it's a big deal, you know? <laughs> like I cannot uh, you know, underestimate the importance of always starting on time. People started to come on time. I mean, uh, again, in real world, uh, with the outside pandemic, I had, I don't know, maybe like two or three people coming a little bit later and a little bit, like five, 10 minutes later. And they would even email me and say, you know what, sorry, I will be late. So I think that it was all like good practice. Uh, so uh, the other part which helped me a lot uh, for the first two years at least. Um, so, um, you know, a friend of mine, uh, the uh, lead DP at uh, Innova, Jerry Sivers, he's just awesome. And I told him, I need your help. So after each speaker, uh, we had this like 15 minutes for Jerry. Uh, so anybody could um, just ask him anything and he would do q a on any postgres topics so that was like a month's help and uh then we ended up this q a with jerry ended up trickling into uh the like the the, the rest of the uh like networking uh and uh, then uh this uh unscheduled time so we started to have this unst uh, unstructured time after after so again here is important part people who need to go uh, people who need to leave earlier they listen to the speaker if they want and have time to go on so then they can uh, stay but they are not missing anything from the talk so this uh, like flipping um, the scheduler that was very important okay all right so uh other things which I started to do, I started to do Chicago Park Awards, and uh, I have a little bit of fund uh, on the Chicago Park account, uh, and it's like literally like 50 bucks Amazon gift card, so um, I'm keeping track of all the talks, and I'm reminding people each time uh, in the beginning of Park that, okay, best talk award, so you need to vote at the end of the year in December, we vote for best award. Uh, then I still never gave student talk award. I'm like, I'm hoping that eventually, uh, you know, there will be um, like some students <laughs> who will give a talk. I'm asking everybody, but this one did not play well yet. I'm still hoping. So diversity award is uh, my award. Uh, so the history is that, uh, so everybody knows that we do not have enough uh, female uh, in um, IT, in tech, and uh, that the situation in Postgres is like worse than probably in any other areas. So my diversity award is uh, that I am giving it for first female speaker, which is not me. 
uh, and actually I was able to avoid this for two years in a row. <laughs> so I didn't get the chance to do it this year, so we shall see. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm actively encouraging people to vote and uh, especially like having female speakers huge. I literally have maybe one except me, but it's still big progress. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm doing in the beginning. I'm doing this five minute intro. You know, people who come somewhere do not have Wi-Fi, that's a tragedy. So most important thing, I have Wi-Fi and then um, I have this list of uh, bug awards and list of talks so far. Then uh, again, at normal times outside pandemic and we have upcoming conferences, I always list. So this is what is coming, deadlines, discounts and uh, watch for discount information for Chicago Park members. Uh, then I am giving uh, the speaker intro and I am showing announcement for next meetup. So most of the time I know what will happen next time, who will be speaking, what's the date. So it gives people time for planning. And uh, each time, very important, I end each of my five minutes intro. Thank you so much for being a part of Chicago Postgres user group. I wouldn't be able to do anything without you. Please support Meetup. Please come with suggestions. Please let us know how you make it better. Volunteer to talk, suggest the topics, etc. All right. So what else? Uh, what else I'm doing? Variety of speakers. Uh, that is part which is difficult to balance. So I'm always trying to invite great people, important speakers. And fortunately, I have connections like everybody knows me uh, and uh, I can <laughs> ask virtually anybody to come and talk. So that's great. But I also uh, encourage local talks. So each time at Meetup, um, I repeat people, uh, you know what, whatever you are doing in your company, each of you are innovating, each of you doing something new and interesting. And there is nothing which is not interesting. We would love to hear your experiences. What you did with was super cool. Please come and share. And I had quite a bit of local talks when uh, people just tell, okay, so we developed this and in course of developing, we found this like, you know, little cool tool which helps us to do so and so. Great, you know. Um, then companies and products, that's a tough part because, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like representatives from different software development companies and stuff, they message me and like, can we talk? Uh, and I'm actually letting them talk. So one thing I'm not allowing, I'm not allowing active recruiting during meetups, but then people have, uh, you know, opportunity to socialize and like talk and uh, find people. But uh, okay, if somebody wants to introduce their product, please, yeah, full speed ahead. Uh, so I am, uh, and they are always like, okay, uh, can we like buy your pizza? Can we buy your beer? I like, you know what? We can buy our pizza and beer, but you know, if you want to contribute to the Chicago Park account, always welcome, not required. You can speak for free. Uh, again, it's usually like nice balance. So uh, I'm keeping track of, okay, so I have great uh, Postgres community speakers. I have local people and I have companies and products. And uh, sometimes uh, for local speakers, I can combine two or three speakers during one meetup. It's also fun, you know? And then they invite their support group. So one company who did not uh, have big presence in Chicago Park, they come and like, talk. So it's all good. Uh, all right. Other thing, all speakers are equal. That is also a very tough part. So like, as I told you guys, it once happened that the speaker was late and uh, you know, I had uh, two talks this day and he was supposed to be first speaker. And I know that the second speaker already like, you know, he was ready to be second. And I did not want to reward this behavior that he forgot what time it starts. Like literally, that's what he told me. So I quickly arranged one more speaker. Fortunately, again, I have good network. 
I have people who are able to jump in. Uh, and we had this new talk and he like came like, sorry, nope. And this, I can be second, nope, sorry. I have somebody else who is second. So you cannot be second. Uh, and um, other things, so as I said, I plan ahead. I try to plan like a couple of months ahead. So, uh, and sometimes I schedule a local speaker and then, oh, you know what? So-and-so, somebody from like, you know, somebody really like important will be in Chicago. So do you want, and I like, oh, now what? Sorry, you need to notify me in advance. Because you know what, if I will tell somebody, sorry, I scheduled you, but now somebody who is more important is coming and I want to reschedule you, you know, who will have any respect to me and, you know, my promises and everything. So I had the citations when I did turn big speakers away when it was like a week short of notice. I like, sorry, let's plan next time. Let's plan ahead. I cannot do this. So I think it also helps, you know, building trust and good relationships. And once again, we encourage local talks. It's very important because people come there not only to learn from the great masters, people want to be valued, appreciated, and everybody has something to contribute, like honestly, everybody. And the other important thing, again, not for pandemic time, but <laughs> like seriously, I found it very important having something else except pizza. People love it. People love it, really appreciate it. And uh, I was always making sure when I order food, I have like healthy options in addition to like five different varieties of pizza or even more. Uh, like, you know, it's really important these times. So pandemic. And then pandemic happened. So I literally, I prepared this talk. So it was like 20 minutes talk and uh, up <laughs> pandemic happened and the countries didn't happen. And uh, my meetup was like, literally, I think that uh, it was like uh, three days after we went on lockdown. So the speaker canceled a week before that. Uh, and uh, first one I skipped uh, and I was trying, I was trying very hard to make sure we have something. But the problem in March was that some people were already working from home. Some people were transitioning. Some people were from the office. So it was like logistically, I did not know how to do this. And uh, this, I was at a loss and I thought I'm, you know, a failure, I'm a bad leader for the community. And um, okay, so <laughs> then we like, regrouped and started doing uh, Zoom meetups in April. So I uh, did my talk, which again, I scheduled, rescheduled, and then we continue. So um, what were the pandemic challenges? First of all, it is difficult to talk on Zoom. And it's unbelievably difficult to talk if you did not have these chances before. Like now I'm talking and I do not know whether I'm talking too fast or like everybody already disengaged. I do not see your faces. I do not see your eyes. It's extremely difficult. So it uh, even people who are great uh, speakers, if they did not have Zoom experience, they kind of like do not perform this well. I performed horrible by the way in the beginning. Now I got some practice, okay? Uh, so without live audience, you cannot adjust uh, like your talk, you cannot, address directly, so like tons of challenges. Uh, yeah, you cannot do beer and pizza. And uh, I'm joking about beer and pizza, but joking, but not joking. So I still cannot really measure this impact, but each time I schedule next event, I like, sorry guys, you, I cannot send you beer and pizza. So it's a fact, it's not a challenge. Uh, the other challenge, not showing up. So when you signed up for virtual event and you know that the only thing you need is to dial from your home, it's very easy not to dial. When you know that you have to go somewhere and it's like physically you need to make this mental effort. Okay, after work, I'm going. Then you kind of already made up your mind. You didn't have time to turn on, you, you didn't have time. And you know, people skip virtual way more than the skip real life event. Uh, and you might think why it's easier actually just to turn on, but somehow psychologically, 
uh, people, I mean, I saw it that people feel like it's easier to skip a virtual event than the real event. Uh, and the other thing, uh, it's uh, just difficult to keep attendance high because many people are like either out of work or overwork, like one of two. So people who are out of work, they kind of like feel depressed, do not want to go to meet up, uh, especially there is no networking and you cannot really find, uh, you know, potential, uh, your potential next employment. And uh, then uh, like, uh, overworked, all the others are overworked, <laughs> including myself. So then you do not want to do anything after work, uh, for example, because work does not end, okay? Uh, so those are real challenges and we are trying to work on them. But in addition to challenges, we also have some pandemic gains. So you can invite any speaker, you know? You do not need to worry, okay, does, uh, do they have engagement in Chicago? Can you like plan around their travels? Or if they don't, you need to like book hotel for them? Look, wow, you just need to be approximately at the same time zone. So I was able to invite some great speakers just because it's so easy now, okay? And also people from anywhere in the world uh, can dial in, only the time zone is the limit. So my some of my former coworkers who moved away from Chicago, but they still miss meetup, they started to dial in. And that's great, actually. Uh, and yes, the reduction of cost, obviously, because uh, I mean, my company was awesome, uh, paying uh, like most of the costs associated with running Chicago Park. So yes, virtually it's easier, the only thing I need uh, my paid Zoom account. <laughs> that's it. Um, so there are some gains. Okay, uh, and uh, the takeaways. Uh, so, uh, again, I heard lots of discussions. What will happen when uh, it will be all over? And it will be over if you think it won't. I mean, I'm a firm believer it will be over. So what will happen? Uh, we will be live, definitely. So as soon as uh, live events will be uh, possible, we will be live and Chicago Park is never going to become virtual, that's for sure. I'm, uh, like, I can bet on that. But we still want to Zoom meetings. And you know, uh, you know what? Uh, previously, uh, again, in multiple situations when somebody would message me and say, oh, can you please do live stream? I cannot attend, but I would love to see it like from, you know, remote parts from Illinois, from like, okay, from St. Louis and from whatever. And I like, should you know what? I think it would be a great idea. I just kind of do not have capacity, mental capacity to set up live streaming. So now we have it. So definitely I think that great uh, advantages of having live stream in addition to live event. So uh, we will be definitely doing it. Uh, and uh, the other thing we might consider having online speakers, even when we will be live. Uh, we're still thinking about it uh, because um, you know, previously I was like, like categorically against uh, having somebody speaking from Skype or from Zoom when uh, live uh, attendees are here. But we might be doing it. Uh, I mean, like honestly, we'll still like have to decide. Uh, so um, again, we're running it. Uh, I think we will end up uh, 2020 strong. Uh, Definitely all these online events are put on hold. Definitely we miss the ability of socializing life, but I think overall Chicago Park is doing great under challenging circumstances. So takeaways, get to know your community. You know, this thing about like people working uh, in the city, live in the burbs, it's not everybody's dynamic. And I spoke to other uh, meetup organizers. So you need to see what is your community, what's their normal, typical work schedule, commuting or not, and plan events which work for them. Listen to your community, like get feedback constantly each time after meetup, before meetup, in between of meetup, it's very important. Uh, and respect your community, respect including, like, you know, starting on time, providing vegetarian options, uh, not uh, letting people disrupt uh, uh, all the situation, uh, be respectful for the speakers, be respectful for your audience. And be thankful for your community. For me, it's a big part. I'm always having this uh, slide. 
Thank you so much for being part. Thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. Uh, this uh, part, this uh, meetup is live because you are here, you are coming. And uh, it time and effort. Uh, you know, it's surprisingly how, how much time and effort it takes because uh, even scheduling speakers, when you need to work around other people's scheduler, when somebody say, maybe yes, maybe no. And I do not want to have somebody just in case because nobody likes to be standby speaker. Nobody wants to be like, you know what? If so-and-so would not appear, I will ask you. It's a miserable situation. Nobody wants it. It's disrespectful. So all this planning, making sure that you have a speaker and you don't have two speakers who competing for one time slot. That's a lot, lots of like politics, lots of psychology, lots of everything. But I think all this is just, you know, it's, it's paid off. So uh, I think that I think we're really doing a good job with this. And uh, also for me personally, it's a big commitment because uh, again, when I started it in uh, 2017, I thought, uh, okay, so after it will be like going, rolling, uh, then probably I would not need to like do it all the time by myself. Uh, so for me it's big. I'm planning all my personal things, all my personal trips around Chicago Park. I mean, I cannot tell I need to go somewhere when Chicago Park is scheduled. Now, when I had uh, back surgery in uh, 2018, I uh, had uh, one pug in, in the body brace. So, because I just had to be there, you know, to like two, two weeks after surgery. Um, so, I take it seriously, and I think that's why people also take it seriously and come. Okay, and that ends my presentation. The, yep, uh, that's it, and questions are welcome. Awesome. Um, so I have three questions here. Um, and then if anybody else has any more, please feel free to put them in the chat now. Uh, first question is, what are the best practices for starting a new meetup? Oh, uh, you know, that's a great question because I, uh, like in some sense, I did not start a new meetup. I just took what was there, uh, but um, you know what, uh, what I think? It, it depends again where you started. Because uh, for example, if you know, uh, I think it all starts from people. If you know uh, people from your like place, your city who spoke or participated in some conferences, what I would do, I would try to find them. I would try to reach out. Uh, Advertising in other meetups normally does not help because normally people are very local, even now that we are going virtual. So um, I would say start from finding people. Start uh, from the company. So the other thing, uh, you know, need to research which companies in your area are using Postgres and maybe, you know, you know somebody or somebody from your network, not somebody, like try to reach out to specific people. So it's all about people. And uh, when you have a group, you know, when you have uh, like five, 10 people, then you can start a meetup on meetup page and then uh, see how things will go, you know, then ask everybody to advertise. So I'm always copying my uh, meetup advertisements on my LinkedIn and on my professional blog. And um, hopefully it will, you know, get some traction. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, another question, they're starting to come in. Um, can you say a little bit about your company support do you have to keep asking for it? No, uh, actually, the, no, uh, that was like awesome. Because my company, first time I talked with our CEO, and we're a small company. When I started doing it with a company of like 15 employees. <laughs> uh, so that was big, uh, big ask. But, uh, you know, uh, our CEO, she really like, you know, respects me and the values. And she said, yes, you can do this. And uh, she was always giving space. And uh, we were always doing uh, peace and beer through the, uh, uh, like a uh, corporate card. No, I never asked. You know what? Also really remarkable. So when we moved from smaller office to the new office and there was a big space uh, like in the around the kitchen area and uh, like my CEO said, you know what? 
that would be a great place for your meetup. I was thinking that you will need it and we have speakers and we purchase microphones and we purchase bigger screens so that you can uh, continue holding your meetups. So I like, I never had to ask a second time. So like one ask and it will, I was supported all the way. That's incredible. Um, I've been in your shoes before and not every organization is um, that that giving. So um, good on good on Bravient Holdings. Um, another one, do you have any recommendations for soliciting feedback from your attendees? Uh, that is that might be challenging. Uh, there, there are uh, questions on a uh, meetup page. So what I was asking at the beginning of each meetup, please rate um, our meetup. Uh, so they, they can come. Uh, so after a meetup is over, you can set up automatic email. How was the meetup? And then you can like kind of prompt them to rate meetup. Uh, the other thing I did, it takes a little bit of effort, but uh, again, it's worth. I was uh, putting together the uh, surveys. So again, you can do it at meetup page. You can put together survey with questions. And uh, then I was sending it through the uh, meetup messaging. Again, it's all built in. So you can uh, mess, if you are organized, you can message to all um, attendees or to everybody who are subscribed for the organizer messages. And then, uh, so have a survey online and like explicitly send it. Uh, so again, it might not work. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's challenging, but um, yes, keep, keep trying. <laughs> Great. And we have one more question. Um, so finally, do you have, I'm oh, sorry, do you use the same speaker format for every meetup, i.e. do you ever do panels or fireside chats? Uh, I, uh, okay. I was planning to do this. So normally we have several events with one uh, meetup. So uh, most of the time I have a speaker and uh, it's maybe long presentation or maybe several short presentations. Then we have this Q and A's uh, for the panels. I was thinking about this. Uh, I mean, I love panels. I think it's like very productive form of holding meetups. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging, like in general, because uh, you know the world of photographs is small and it's difficult to put together like so several people who you know people would come and talk to like at one place at one time. Uh, so I think it's good, and I hope that when there will be a, like. Uh, <laughs> not online, but uh, like live again, I will be able to do this. But uh, panels, I, uh, I, I've been participating in a couple of panels on other meetups and uh, I love it, it's great. I like literally did not get yet for this, this format. Fantastic. Um, so those are all the questions that have come in. Uh, I wanna say thank you so much, Hetty. This has been fantastic. Um, particularly as an events person myself, uh, lots of uh, really solid key learnings here. Um, additionally, I want to say thank you to all of our attendees. You guys are wonderful. Uh, keep coming back. See, Hetty, I'm following your advice. Yes. <laughs> um, we, we wouldn't or couldn't do this without you. So regardless of where you are, if it's morning, afternoon, or evening, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you back here next week. Thank you.